My name is Loren Moray. I'm a geoscientist and I am a specialist in radiation and um, the impact that it's had globally from uh, nuclear weapons testing, nuclear power plants, and depleted uranium weaponry. I worked at two nuclear weapons laboratories and became a whistleblower in 1991 at the Livermore Nuclear Weapons Lab. I'm a geoscientist, which means that I study the Earth and Earth processes. And this happens to be a very, very good background to understand radiation and how it cycles through the environment. Uh, the health of the environment is extremely important for public health because we drink the same water, we breathe the same air, and we eat food from uh, soils that um, may be contaminated. So we can be no healthier than the health of the environment. And that is why the health of the environment is so important for the future of humanity and for all life. Now, I read about um, a dentist in the 1930s named Dr. Weston Price. He went all over the world studying indigenous people living on their indigenous diets. And what he discovered is that good health, uh, an absence of cancer, an absence of tooth decay, is perfectly normal in indigenous people living on their natural indigenous diets. And also he discovered that um, the children have disease-free childhoods. Um, I don't think that we could find indigenous people now who are truly as healthy as they were in the 1930s because our whole global environment has been contaminated from the atomic bomb testing, which was conducted um, from the 1950s uh, up until 1993 when the Chinese finally stopped. The um, harm of radiation has always been known um, since the 1920s. So um, bureaucratized governments, scientific power, and the military have always known since the 1920s about the terrible harm of ionizing radiation. And um, this is a book by uh, Dr. Lee. Um, it's called Actions of Radiation on Living Cells. I went to the library to get his um, paper uh, which he wrote in the 1920s on, on he was experimenting on fruit flies, uh, Drosophila melanogaster, and exposing them to x-rays. And he would expose one male fruit fly at a time to one x-ray, and then he studied the damage, the, the genetic damage that was proliferated over the next 40,000 generations of that fruit fly. And he could study that because fruit flies have a very, very short life cycle. If you think about how many life cycles humans have had in the last 10,000 years, um, let's say a person has an average uh, reproductive uh, cycle of every 20 years, that's five generations in 100 years and that would be 500 in 10,000 years. So um, we're doing an awful lot of damage to future generations uh, without even realizing it. And the terrible truth is that the damage from ionizing radiation to DNA is irreversible. It's permanent damage. There is some natural background radiation from the sun, from cosmic rays, from the solar wind, and from minerals in our environment. But um, that those are very low levels, and we have an ionosphere, uh, which is a layer in the atmosphere that actually protects us from uh, radiation entering 
uh, into our environment. Not completely, but um, uh, does a pretty good job. And so our bodies have, or all living things, have evolved over four and a half billion years, the age of the earth, to um, adapt to or to be able to recover from or to survive the natural levels of radiation. And the body has things like protector molecules, which can um, neutralize the energy from the ionizing radiation in the cells. Um, and there are other things, other factors that, that help. But what we're doing by exploding thousands of nuclear weapons over a 30-year period is that we're releasing far, far, far more radiation into the atmosphere than um, our bodies can handle. It's, uh, um, it's overburdening all living things with this radiation. So, actually, what does radioactive mean? Radioactive means that um, it, it's an element, uh, one of the basic units of um, uh, physical matter that has a nervous nucleus. That's what I call it, a nervous nucleus. And almost every element on the periodic chart can uh, become radioactive under certain conditions. Um, when we put plutonium or uranium into a nuclear bomb and send it up into the atmosphere or underground and detonate it, it explodes and what happens is all the elements or the atoms of plutonium or, u or uranium, they fragment. In other words, they sort of tear unevenly in half and that produces um, all kinds, hundreds of radioactive elements that aren't normally uh, radioactive in a um, in in the normal um, situation on on the in the physical world. So um, these radioactive atoms go all over in the atmosphere, and they are so tiny, the very tiny ones stay suspended in the atmosphere. So what have we done in the United States? The American population is the most nuclear bomb population in the world. We detonated almost 1,200 nuclear weapons in testing at the Nevada test site. And um, this is the fallout map which is made from U.S. government data measured on the ground of the man-made radiation which our government was measuring the whole time. And the reason this is so spotty is because the radiation um, is not fallout. The fallout falls to the ground uh, quite soon after uh, the explosion, but it depends on the size of the particles. But the very tiny particles, the nanoparticles of radioactive materials are transported in the air across the United States and they only end up um, in the environment and in our bodies and exposing us when they're rained out or snowed out of the atmosphere. So um, that map represents um, uh, the, the combined tests and as you can see, it went all over the United States. Now, what is very interesting is that a woman, a little old lady in tennis shoes, never underestimate them, uh, named Sally Devlin, uh, lives in Nevada, and she was able to get uh, some documents declassified for me because she's a very, very smart lady. And what she got declassified for me is uh, documents about the secret EPA dairy. The Environmental Protection Agency secretly had a dairy at the Nevada test site and they were measuring the radiation in the milk, in the cows, in the calves, 
they even had beef herds there, and they were also measuring the radiation in the beef herds. Um, this is the strontium-90 concentration measured in Nevada um, right after these bomb tests. So you can see uh, strontium-90, which is almost chemically like calcium, um, when it's taken up into the body and it ends up in the bones and the teeth and, and different cell processes. So strontium-90 is a very, very dangerous isotope uh, for living systems. And um, I think it's very evident from the, the fallout map and the EPA dairy uh, data that our government was fully aware that they were poisoning the entire population of the United States and beyond because they were measuring radiation all over the world. Um, this is a paper of uh, fallout and reproduction of ocean fish populations. And this is by Dr. Ernest Sternglass. Um, the fishing catch in the North Atlantic declined 50% uh, by 1963 um, from the beginning of the bomb testing. And uh, when we signed the Partial Test Ban Treaty with Russia in 1963, as you can see, the population rebounded even to more fish and catch, higher, higher um, catches than before the bomb testing started. And the reason is that when you put a stressor on a biological population, uh, once that stressor is removed, the biological population will over-recover and then it comes back into balance to the levels that it was originally at if other factors are not influencing it. Um, and the strontium-90, which the Norwegian government measured in the milk, um, was in Norway, was it, it exactly correlated with that decline in the fishing catch. So there is definitely a correlation between the strontium-90 levels uh, measured in Norway, which would have been coming across the Atlantic and contaminating it, um, and the decline in the fishing catch. So, the, the radiation not only killed our babies, it killed the babies of other living species too. In the Pacific, the fishing catch declined over 65% and it never did come back to previous levels because uh, some countries continued nuclear weapons testing the Chinese didn't stop until 1993. The radioactive fallout from the nuclear weapons tests in Nevada at the Nevada test site actually contaminated uh, also the Sierra Nevada mountains. And um, when, when the radioactive cloud from the Chernobyl disaster uh, went around the world, it went over the Sierra Nevada mountains and it was rained and snowed out and further contaminated the soils and the water and the environment in the Sierras. Now what is very interesting is I worked in the Hunters Point uh, community in San Francisco which was the Hunters Point Naval Shipyard all through World War II and um, after World War II the Navy wanted to study radiation you know they were doing all these bomb tests so they had a secret radiation laboratory there with 65 naval officers and uh, there were 550 uh, civilian scientists working there with the naval officers. And even um, a bomb test um, expert that I know, Marion Falk, he also worked in the Manhattan Project, uh, did not know, he worked at Livermore for 20 years, he never knew about that secret radiation lab at Hunter's Point in San Francisco and it was just 45 or 50 miles away. So I believe that the Navy knows more about radiation probably than any other uh, agency in the United States. It certainly knows